know, he's surrounded by a whole lot of strength. He's surrounded by a whole lot of love. And all he has to do is add discipline, and he's going to be all right. Surrounded by strength and love. Mm, the things that surrounded Bryce Year Gray when he got his big break in the entertainment industry were misuse, mistreatment, bad influence, and much older men taking advantage of him, allegedly. When Lee looked me in my eyes, he said, no, no coach. The rise and fall of this young man is definitely one for the books. One of the reasons being is that his mentors like Will Smith and Lee Daniels were doing more than just <clears throat> mentoring, allegedly. Meek Mills, <laughs> Bashir Gray, <laughs> left that house screaming. August the only one in state. And add to that a bipolar and ADHD diagnosis and tell me why someone like Bryce Shear would not go through what he went through. So Bryce Shear, known to some as Yaz the Greatest, made his small screen debut on Empire as Hakeem Lyon, the youngest son of Lucius Lyon, played by Terrence Howard, and Cookie, played by Taraji P. Henson. As for how we got into the game, Bryce Shear told Vibe Magazine in 2015, I was doing my thing. I was living in Philadelphia and rapping. I was doing a lot of shows all over my city and performing out on the street. I just wanted people to hear me. I was just so eager and ambitious. If I wrote a song that night, I was going to perform it to the world and that's what I did. So I met my manager, Charlie Mack, who was like Will Smith's best friend, and he gave me the audition. Well, at first, he wasn't sure if he really wanted to do it. I didn't want to do Empire because I wasn't an actor. And I just got signed and I'm worrying about my music, I'm recording an album. And I'm like, should I do this audition? <laughs> he like, yeah, you should do it because it, it may change the situation. After that, Bryce Shear did a video audition for Lee Daniels and he loved it and sent him to LA where he auditioned with Taraji and Terrence because they were doing their Empire auditions for Lee too and they got to do it together. The rest, as we all know, is history. And when Bryce Shear was asked about any similarity with Hakeem, he said there's really no other similarity other than the music because Hakeem is so disrespectful, ruthless, and spoiled. And he's the complete opposite because he's a sweetheart and I don't deny that because when he started out Bryshear was just the sweetest human being. I'm very appreciative of the response people are giving and you know people saying they love the show they love the music and they're feeling very inspired from the characters. But something happened in the years that followed y'all because the Bryshear that people know now is like Hakeem 2.0 hell no. Homeboy is literally as problematic as they come. For starters, Bryshear is one person who has been arrested probably more times than one can even count. But the time he proved that there was definitely something wrong with him was when sometime in 2021 he pled guilty and was sentenced to spend 10 days in an Arizona county jail for DV against his wife. When the incident happened, Happened, the wife was treated and released for her non-life-threatening injuries, but based on police reports, she had numerous visible injuries on her body and also stated that she was strangled at one point by Bryshear and temporarily lost consciousness. Guess what? Bryshear initially refused to come out of the house, and a SWAT team and crisis negotiations team had to be called in to assist. And let me tell you, when I was watching his interrogation with law enforcement, I was going crazy. I don't know how the tape got out, but it's insane, y'all. Throughout the two-hour interview, Bryce Shear's account of what happened constantly changed, and he said he went to his friend's John's house to play football, and eventually he was texted or called by a neighbor telling him of a major police presence at his home. And she was saying the cops are outside. Okay. Called her, she was like, a lot of cops outside. Police then asked if Bryce Shear knew John's number or could tell them the address where John lived. But he said he did not know the information because he had met John just days before. Like I said, bro, it's like me meeting you today. I don't know where you live. We got a good vibe. Like, I feel like we could be, if I met you out in person, I'd be like, yo, what's up, bro? Absolutely. Then when they told him they would be able to track his phones, Bryce Shear said that he did not have his phone at John's house. And then he started making some allegations about his wife, saying she had mental issues and that they were in an open relationship. She always, that's what I said, she has like mental issues, like with girls texting me. We have an open relationship. Mm. A chick texts me on the phone. She might say, yes, I want to give you that B. I want to give you that. She, I might delete it and she still see it somehow. 
Raishir also said that his wife tried to take her life a couple of times and he was only trying to stop that from happening and also said that another person named Mark was the one hurting his wife. Well, according to his wife, Raishir had been diagnosed with bipolar disorder and ADHD, but he refused to take his medication. And she also said that Mark is a fake name Raishir uses when he does not want to be recognized when he orders food from hotels. He just in a different incident in November 2022, Brashear was arrested again for violating his probation. Cops were called by a woman claiming that she was dating him, and she told the officer that his behavior was escalating and she was concerned for her safety. The woman also claimed that Brashear threw a box of food at her, pulled her hair, and she also told cops about other instances where he'd shout at her. And it wasn't just that, by the way, because the cops said that he had multiple run-ins with law enforcement, including a domestic relationship disturbance call just the previous month. Brashear apparently failed to inform his probation officer about those incidents, which is why he was hit with a probation violation. And a judge signed a warrant and he was arrested. There was another lawsuit from Brashear's landlord who said that they rented him a condo inside their four-unit Chicago complex back in August 2019. And they claimed that among other things, Brashear left his dog inside the condo for extended periods of time. They claimed the dog was left unattended in common areas in the complex. And urinated and defecated all over the place, which significantly damaged the hardwood floors, stairs, and other parts of the property. In addition, they said Brashear jumped in and out of windows, clogged the toilets by flushing down condoms, smoked pot in the place when smoking was not allowed under the lease, and engaged in unsanitary activity, including, but not limited to, eating breakfast in one of the bathrooms. Oh, there was a time he was accused of spitting on the floor of a 7-Eleven and throwing things at the cashier. And another time, he was also arrested for several driving offenses. Those are just some of the instances, by the way, because if I start getting into every time he was in trouble with law enforcement, we may need a few hours. Okay, it's possible that Brysheer does have bipolar and ADHD, and because he refused to take his medication, he probably made it difficult for people to work with him in Hollywood. But can we also cast a question on what he may have experienced in Hollywood? I mean, I have heard some pretty wild allegations. For instance, Jaguar Wright did one hell of an expose about what goes down with Jada Pinkett and Will Smith and young artists in Hollywood, including Bryce Shear. They're both bisexual, they do weird things in their house, and young men have left their house screaming to get away from them and their mentorship. And not just Will Smith. Allegedly, some things went down with Bryce Shear at Dwayne Wade's house. Did I say allegedly? I'm saying that because of the artist that I just spoke to not that long ago that got invited to a party at their house. Everything was cool up front till they went to the back and there was a bunch of old f and f***ing young boys back there all naked in the Wade house. There's also no telling what happened with Lee Daniels, and I remember watching that Breakfast Club interview with them that gave off serious weird energy. First of all, Lee Daniels talks about spending too much time with Bryce Shear and his son not liking it. My son has an issue with him. Uh-oh. Because I spend, I spend my, my, a lot of time with him. <laughs> and look at how he claps his hands in a spanking motion while saying, yes, 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 in reference to Bryce Shear. Why are we like, talking about me? I gotta talk about okay, yes, yeah. too. Yeah, we have, we have, yeah, we, over the yes. Yes, yes, you don't get to talk yes, to me too much, yes, Lee. Yes, yes, yes. You don't talk to me too much? Nah. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if Bryce Shear experienced some nasty things that made him go through all this. Remember, he already had a very traumatic childhood and mental health issues. So getting into Hollyweird and experiencing some of these things must have really messed him up. But what are your thoughts on Bryce Shear's rise and tragic fall? Did Hollywood do him dirty, then ban him? Sound off in the comments section below.